start off with a few questions. Are you perfect? Do you act perfectly? Do you look perfect? I'm Emily Kaiser, and I'm here to talk to you about perfection, which is kind of a strange subject. It seems harmless, but there are many implications that we don't think of. Perfectionists are praised for their hard work and their, well, perfection, but nobody stops to think if maybe it's not the best thing. Be honest. There has to be something that you want to change about yourself, whether it's the way you act or dress or sound. We all want to be something, and none of us are who we want to be. You all have a character that you want to be. The perfect you, the not you. We all have a different perfect form, so can we really say there is one perfect? Can we define perfection? I'm 16, a teenager, in that stage of life where I think I'm ready to be on my own, but if I were to be dropped off in the middle of nowhere by my parents, I'd more likely get struck by lightning than actually be able to take care of myself. But still, us teenagers think we know who we are. But I'm not trying to be a pessimist, I'm just saying that in reality, we don't know what to expect from the next 10 years of our lives. We can't all be Barbie and try out every career there is. We have three or maybe four years to figure it all out, and it's terrifying. But still, we think we know who we are and we have a lot of media telling us who we can and cannot be. We each strive for what we're told we can achieve. In my case, I strive for good grades and an active social life. I'd love to be great at everything. Star athlete, power couple, straight A's, super popular. Sounds like your average teen movie, but I don't have time for all of that. I stick to what I know. Get my work done. Talk to my friends when I have the chance. I don't really bother with guys, because from what I've seen, only the skinny girls have boyfriends, right? Do I change myself? No, but that doesn't stop me from wishing I was more like someone else, wishing I fit the standards of the roles that I want to play. And this isn't only a prevalent issue in younger people who are worried about image or whatnot. It affects a lot of adults throughout their lifetimes when it comes to career and family life. So many people out there are unsatisfied with their lives, their jobs, and their situations. People feel like they're trapped in the positions that they're in. Although I'm not an adult, I do understand this feeling of being trapped by failure. I feel like I failed when I'm not the best in class, just as you might feel like you failed when you don't get that promotion. But why is our happiness based upon perceived success? Why do we feel that we need to be at the top of the payroll or the class to be happy? Aren't there other things to be happy about? Why are we so focused on competition with one another? Well, what does the media show us we should be? We are told we should be a CEO, a girl boss, a valedictorian, whatever it is that is the best. But when you see past all of that, you see there are more aspects to being happy and successful than your rank. I have a wonderful family, friend group, and a lot of skills that make me unique. Focusing on happiness, skills, and learning rather than rank helps a lot in getting over that feeling of failure. You'll feel more fulfilled by your life. However, it's not always easy to practice this. It's hard to change that mindset and accept the position that you're in. There's still this need to feel perfect. Perfectionism in all situations can lead to serious mental disorders, including anxiety, depression, and eating disorders. There has to be some way to deal with these negative emotions. Maybe we work out, or maybe we find a hobby, or maybe we feel so lost that we can only control one thing. So we binge, purge, avoid, restrict, self-harm, cry, whatever it takes to have control over an aspect of our lives. We are a struggling population. Young people are hurting. According to the American Psychological Association, over 20% of students who go to their school's counseling centers have serious mental health concerns. That's 20%, and that's only out of the students who seek help. There are so many more that don't seek help and that won't get it. People think suicide is the only option. Middle-aged men actually have the highest suicide rate of all age groups. It's not just teenagers. We are all affected by this. So what are we gonna do about this? There's only one thing that's there for us, right? The internet. There have been many mo movements to create positive and accepting communities online. Many of them can be helpful. For instance, Reddit can be a great place to find people with similar concerns who can give each other advice. Instagram and TikTok have loads of influencers who want to relate to us and help us, right? No way. That's not to say there aren't people out there on these apps who really can help us. There are for sure. But we can't rely on them. Most of the accepting communities have toxic traits. Each group has a targeted audience, and although it might not be intentional, they tend to ostracize other groups. For example, if we look at the body positive communities, most of them are focused on the love and acceptance of bigger bodies. All this is great until we realize there's no place for skinny people to talk about their insecurities. They're expected to love themselves because they fit the beauty standards. Everybody is insecure, so why isn't there a place where we can all agree on that and work on accepting ourselves as we are? Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of influencers that preach self-love in an accepting way, but it's not the majority. 
it's really tough to find a place where everyone can work together to work past their insecurities. But this doesn't mean we have nowhere to turn. Reaching out can be one of the scariest and best things you ever do. Maybe start with a friend you trust and talk about how you feel. They can help you understand what you're feeling and whether it's hurting you. For people my age, parents might seem like they'll be angry or that they won't understand, but in most cases, I think that they will. They love you unconditionally and they want to help you. You might find that they've gone through the same things. Therapy can also be incredibly helpful in learning how the world works and finding your place in this world. Therapy is not for crazy people as it may have been perceived in the past. It's a place to discuss and learn about what's going on inside your head and to help put your mind at ease. You deserve it. It takes a lot of courage to fight your own mind and to get help. Just realize that once you've started to help yourself, the world opens up. Opportunities to grow and thrive present themselves. You just have to take that one step. So what are we gonna do about this problem with perfection? We don't always seek help when we need it because we might make us look unstable. We bottle up our emotions and they end up hurting us even more when they develop into full-blown disorders. We're broken, but we still try to put out that perfect self that just brushes these things off. Remember what I said at the beginning of this talk. We all have someone we want to be, and that person is completely different for all of us. As much as I can look at some girl and say, I wish I looked like her, I wish I had her grades, and I wish I could fit into a size too, she's looking right back at me and saying, I wish I had her friends, I wish I had her personality, and I wish I had the bravery to stand up in front of a camera and give a TED talk. You know, we envy each other but we haven't realized that maybe there's a reason we are the way we are. My struggles with body image and mental health might someday make me an advocate for others who struggle and impact their lives in a great way. That guy over there who wishes he was better at sports will someday realize the time he spent practicing piano rather than soccer made him unique, and it really held with his application to Juilliard. That girl over there who wishes she had more friends will someday realize that the friends that she did have were more than that. They were a loving and loyal family who were always by her side. Every flaw that we see in ourselves can be turned into something else. It's just about finding out what it all means. Not the meaning of life per se, but the meaning of you. What can you do to make a difference in this world? Take the time to appreciate who you are and practice self-love and acceptance. Maybe every morning the first thing you do is stand in front of the mirror, bedhead and all, and tell yourself you look beautiful. The funny thing is, your subconscious can't tell the difference. After some time, you'll believe you're beautiful and realize that you always were. Maybe when you go and brush your teeth, put a big smile on your face and tell yourself something to look forward to. You'll start the day on a good note and people around you will notice. You're glowing. When you leave the house, compliment someone you run into. Pass on that happiness to others and let it keep spreading. When you get home at the end of the day, take a second to relax. Close your eyes and congratulate yourself on getting through another day. Release the bad thoughts. Hear them, acknowledge them, and tell them to get out of there. As hard as it is to stop dwelling on this embarrassing moments that play over and over again in our head if we let them, we need to let go of the honest mistakes that we've made. Take the time to work on yourself, and I think you'll see a difference. Even if you don't see it right away, the people around you will notice. They'll notice you smiling a bit more, being present at every moment, getting out of your head. For so long, I was putting a damper on the light inside of me. I was stuck in my head. Realizing that self-loathing and that need for perfection brings back the life in us. Let's all of us work together, bring some light into our otherwise bleak world. I think we'd all benefit from it. I don't want to make myself an example for all of you. I can't claim that I've been able to fully get rid of the need for perfection out of my head. I haven't, but I'm honest with myself about that. I can identify when these thoughts come back and I can help myself go through the motions to know that I'm just fine as I am. But I have to be honest with myself and realize when I'm giving those thoughts too much power. I think honesty is so important to escaping the pressure of perfection. There's no need to change when you honestly feel like you are good, beautiful, and kind the way you are. We should all strive to accept ourselves. If you aren't happy with the way that you are, there's nothing wrong with self-improvement. If you don't like the way you act, target the bad behaviors and try your best to change them. Make an effort to be nicer or to be braver or whatever you want to be more of. If you want to change the way your body looks, make a plan, a healthy plan, and make those changes. Stick with it and don't be afraid to ask for help when things don't go as expected. If you aren't happy with something, don't sit there and wish you were born a different person. Remember that all of the aspects of who you are make you unique and give you special strength that other people do not have. Brag to yourself. Remind yourself how cool you are, how special you are, and how much you have going for you. 
Don't pretend everything is fine if it really isn't. Don't settle for the half best you. And work towards who you want to be. I'm not saying you have to work towards that perfect character in your head. You shouldn't strive to be them because they aren't real. They are simply an illusion of perfection. You are you and you are unique and beautiful as you are. You should be the one to define yourself. Don't let someone else tell you who to be. When you have the motivation to make a change, take it, use it, and appreciate the commitment to staying true to you. Thank you.